Hey coaches, here's a look at the H counter at the wing T formation. We're gonna draw this up against the 5-3 first, and then we're gonna go ahead and do it against the 4-4. Four, four. So we're gonna run an H counter here. Now there's a couple of different ways you could run it, but our rule on counter, okay, we're gonna pull the backside guard and the backside wing. So I guess you could call it a GW counter. All right, a lot of people will have this guy labeled as the H, so then it would be GH counter. But in this case, we'll call it GW counter. We're always going to kick out the contain player, okay, which in this case will be the D end, and then you'll see it'll be that overhang outside linebacker in like a 4 4. Right. So we'll start with the play side blocking, all right? They're going to block inside over free. No one was inside, no one over, he's free. Now, you have a couple options here. You can double this kid, all right? Um, if we if we were to double him, a lot of times on our counter we do. We'd call it deuce. Okay, that will tell the play side tight end and tackle that we're going to double this kid because you really have to get this kid moved. You know, if he anchors and, and disruptive, he can maybe spool the play out or make it cut in sooner than we want. So if you could, if you could handle the D tackle one on one with your tackle, great. If not, you can double team because you are pulling two players, so you have two guys for these two. So. You know, you, you if you don't want to double team, just have them go inside over free. If you want them to double team, just tag it deuce. Or you can make the rule, you know, we are going to, you know, make the rule automatic double team of the play side defensive tackle. I, per, we run it a lot where we'll, we don't, we don't do so unless we tell them to, but a lot of time we'll tag deuce and that'll tell we're going to double the play side tackle. All right. So guard's going to go inside over free. Okay. We're free for the middle linebacker here. Again, if the nose is slanting to the strength or he's, you know, slanting to the strength, meaning slanting to your tight end, okay, you could double with the, you could have a double deuce or whatever you want to call it. You could just have an automatic deuce on the, on the nose. A lot of times we just have our center step play side and base, all right? You really don't need to waste two blockers or you shouldn't really have to waste two blockers on an off tackle run, you know, by double teaming an A gap defender. So your center should just step play side and base that kid. Don't let him beat him through his upfield shoulder. You just need to base this kid, you know, just neutralize him. You don't need to drive him back or block him down. If you can, great. But again, just wall him off. All right, so now the guard's going to pull. So he's going to block gap down is basically what we do with this. He's going to check that this there's no linebacker creeping up. So he's going to replace the guard and he could block back here. If they have a defender here and a defender here, all right, we want to take we want to take this kid, but um, we really want to step, check our inside gap, and then just block this kid back. Now you could have him just block inside over free because you are replacing the pulling guard with the fullback. All right, so you don't have to even worry about him replacing the guard. We do have him check, step down, and then base because you know if they have a defender right up over the guard, it's hard to. You know, the, by the time the fullback replaces, this kid's going to be here, and it's and he, he's kind of already penetrating. Whereas if we just block him down here, okay, the, the tackle could cut him off, and then maybe you could have the F replace the tackle. So it's really up to you. You could have the left guard, uh, left tackle replace the left guard, and have the F replace him. Anyone outside that doesn't matter. All right, so guard, we're going to say uh, tackle going to block inside over. All right, we're going to execute a great fake. We're going to replace the pulling guard with the fullback. This guard's going to pull. He's going to kick out this defensive end. All right, let's make this red. We're always going to kick out the defensive end. All right, aiming point is the inside hip of the defender he's kicking out. So inside hip of this DN. Going to pull tight right off these blocks and then kick out. You don't want him to pull too flat. Okay, you want to pull tight right off. The butts of these blocks, okay? We know we can't pull flat. We gotta pull and then climb and then kick out. Really root this kid out. So now the quarterback, you have to make sure he gets off of the midline, okay? This handoff is gonna occur out here. Since the F is replacing the guard, it's gonna be a tight downhill path, okay? So he's gonna catch the snap, he's gonna or take the snap, he's gonna open up that left foot off the midline. Fake to the A F, and then he's going to hand to the H coming back this way. All right, so he'll be, I guess you could say, behind the quarterback. 
All right, but it's very important that your quarterback doesn't collide with the fullback. And then obviously make sure your fullback executes a great fake. Really exaggerate it. All right, and then now the, it, the W, he's going to pull and he's going to he's gonna wrap. He's going to look for this linebacker. Now, you could do a couple different things here because, you know, there, there are a lot of moving pieces here. You don't want the fullback to collide with the W. What we would, what we do is we'll have our H. You could have him jab step. Okay, we will probably have him just jab, do a half jab step, and then as that fullback crosses down, we then we go. All right. So again, you have to work on the timing with counter. Anytime you're running counter, you know there is some required. Uh, Got to put some minutes into it. So you know, have him jab step and then go. That'll give time for the W to pass behind the F. So you could have him cheat in and back, okay? Have him do a half jab step too. Okay, we have him just wait literally one second, one one thousand, and he's going, all right? So he's just going to turn. You could have him start going. Just make sure he kind of downshifts. So just as that fullback is passing him, then he can go. So you, you could have him delay for a second. You could have him jab, jab step. Or you could just have him run that way, just not fast enough to collide with the F. And then right off the butt of the F, he'll pull and look for this play side outside linebacker. And then your split end could stalk block, okay? Or if you're getting pressed, man, you could just have him outside release and run off. You have the X go to safety. It's really whatever you want to do. All right, so let's get to the G um, H counter against the 4-4. As I said, we're always going to kick out the contain player. So in this look here, pre-snap, this is the contain player. Sorry. All right, this is the contain player. So this is the kid we're going to kick out. So let's make him red. Let's make him. All right. So now we're going to block inside over free. We have an inside defender. We're going to base him. You can deuce it. All right. So that would, that would be a double team on this kid. Right guard's going to block inside over. He has an inside shade. He's going to base this D tackle wall off here. Center's always blocking backside A gap defender. All right. So we're going to block him. He's going to pull. No one inside. No one over. He's going to step down. Replace the puller. I'm sorry. Inside over free, no one is inside, no one over, so he's free to climb to the mic. If you're scared about this end, you could block him. He shouldn't make the play, but inside over free. Guard is going to pull right off the butt of the blockers and kicked out the contained player. Now, when they're in the 4-4, his outside linebackers might be a little bit wider, or, or he may even walk himself up on the line, which would be great. But make sure, you know, this is a little bit longer of a pull and more of a upfield pull. So, but make sure he's still pulling tight off the line of scrimmage and then the aiming point still the inside hit. Fullback will replace the pulling guard. The wing is going to cross behind the fullback. He is going to wrap for the linebacker. This kid's going to jab step. We're going to come back this way and run counter here. Okay, quarterback is going to step off the midline, half fake to the fullback, and then hand to the H. Now, what you can also do, a lot of teams will make the kick out will be the defensive end. All right, that's something you can do too. So in this case, for us, we're always going to kick out the contain player on an off tackle run. And when I say off tackle, could be power off tackle, could be counter off tackle. Okay, so for us, the kick out is always the contain player. So the, and the kick out player will be different depending on the defense we're playing. But we do the contain player. You could very much make it the end, make the DN the contain player. So regardless of the team you're playing, the DN could be the contain uh, the kickout player. All right. So if that's the case, it is a little bit shorter of a pull path. I'm just trying to give you guys as many different ways to run this as possible. And you could change the kickout by a week by week thing. So you could either kick out him or kick out him. So you can, you know, you can kick out these ends, especially if it's like a 6-2. Or they, let's say these guys are on the line. You know, that's a really long pull path, so you could just kick him out. Or if you're having trouble with these um, defensive ends, those C-gap players, you could just kick them out too, and you don't got to really just try to base block them. All right, so if we're going to kick out the end, he's going to step, he's going to arc 
make sure he arcs when he arcs and blocks this kid make sure he doesn't block him square up because this kid's just gonna come just kids just gonna come off the block and impact the play we when we arc we want to pull tight arc tight here and then work for play side leverage so we want to base this kid out okay if we can't do that you just block him the best we can but we really want to wall off the inside so even if we have to engage with him head on we need to make sure we work to seal off here because this is hitting right in here if you block him straight up straight head to head he's just going to come off the block and make a play all right so no one in his inside gap no one over we're free for the mic here here pull to short a pull path kicking out here inside over free oops h is a bit of a mess right now okay h is wrapping oh, tighter tighter pull path here first linebacker to show okay make sure everyone understands that if you're kicking out a c gap player it's going to be it's going to hit a little bit tighter all right so then we have the h it's going to jab step we're going to work back this way we're going to hit hit it right behind this the eight um the w wrapping all right so that's the h back counter against the 4-4.